During the very early growth stages, sampling for mirrored should be conducted weekly. But as fruiting begins, such as this crop that I'm in here now that's squaring, the frequency of sampling should increase every three or four days as influxes of mirrors can occur quite rapidly. As the crop develops and gets to about nine to 10 nodes, beet sheet sampling is going to be the most effective tool the distribution of mirrors throughout a field area can at times be clumped. But the key thing is that your sample size is sufficient to overcome in-field variability and that you can be confident in the numbers per metre row that you've calculated. Deciding whether or not you might need to control mirrors is a more complex decision process than what it can be for other pests. The presence of nymphs, for example, suggests that the population has become established. Knowing what nymph stages you have is also important. There are times where mirrors can also act as predators within the crop feeding on a range of other softer bodied insects. And this is one of a range of factors that is responsible for the variability that's seen at times between the amount of damage caused and the number of nymphs present in a field. Weather conditions can also affect the amount of damage that mirrors might cause. And this is why in the threshold guidelines, there's a distinction made between cool areas and warm areas. What's important is that a control decision is taken when mirrored numbers have exceeded the numerical threshold or perhaps numbers have been below threshold, but there's been a population entrenched in that crop for some time and you're starting to see excessive shedding and plant damage. The first step is to really consider whether it's necessary to actually spray. And then you're not putting an insecticide out just because it's operationally convenient as you're doing an over the top roundup spray. Take into account what you're finding on a beet sheet and also look at the crop to get clues as to how myriads are interacting with the crop in terms of damage potential. There's a range of natural enemies that will feed on mirrors in the field, although none of them are specialist feeders on mirrors. Take a note of these sorts of beneficials, particularly when you're going to make a spray decision. Not only the beneficials for mirrors, but beneficials for other pest species that might be present in the field. If you're sampling and crop damage warrant the use of an insecticide, it's important to consider the different options that are available. A cheaper, more broad spectrum option might seem like a cost saving at the start of the season, but if it results in the flaring of mites and white fly towards the end of the season, it can end up costing you more money than a more selective but more expensive option early season. The use of reduced rates, particularly for some of the broad spectrum insecticide options and the addition of salt has been a popular option for reducing the impact on beneficial insects after an insecticide treatment's been made. However, one of the things to keep in mind is that the residual activity of those products is also reduced. And if the mirrors have been successful in laying eggs in that field and those nymphs emerge, you may find yourself in the position where you're needing to retreat fields only seven to 10 days after that first application. The successful management on this pest really does depend on taking an integrated approach so that we not only manage mirrors successfully in the crop, but that our management of this particular pest doesn't interfere with the management of the other important pests within the system. To assist you in making those decisions, Refer to the Cotton Pest Management Guidelines where you'll find good information on mirrors, samplings, thresholds, as well as the impacts of various insecticides on natural enemies. Mm -hmm.